Good afternoon, Knife Nerds. Today we are taking a look at the beautiful Shirogorov Hation Zero. This knife has an overall length of 7.75 inches and a blade length of 3.375 inches. It is M390 steel. It is a titanium frame lock and it has a carbon fiber show side and a titanium frame scale with a carbon fiber inlay and uh, so on to the aesthetics of this knife which I think are absolutely stunning let's talk about the blade here for a minute the finish on this blade with my terrible lighting if you can see that is this amazing ultra fine bead blasted finish I'm not sure I've ever seen another company that accomplishes a bead blast quite like this. It's almost like it was ultra fine bead blasted and then somewhat polished, perhaps with walnut shells and a tumbler. I don't really know how to explain it other than, than to show you that there is a slight bit of reflectivity to the bead blast. So it's very different than other companies uh, type of bead blast that I've seen in the past. I think it's sort of similar to like Koenig, what they call their, um, <clears throat> I want to say they call it bright, no not bright wash, they call it um, burnished. They call it a burnished finish and to me, to me it looked like a bead blasted finish that had been somewhat polished somehow. I'm just going to get this dust off the blade here. Uh, polished in a tumbler, but I don't think Koenig executes it quite as good as Shirogorov does. This is just gorgeous. And so you've got a flat ground blade that is fairly thin behind the edge here. And you do have some, you know, very attractive uh, jimping on the spine of the blade here. However, it is not not what I would call a functional jimping. This is more of an aesthetic jimping. If you dig into it with your thumb, it, it, it still doesn't really add any traction. So it's not a functional jimping. It is an, uh, an aesthetic jimping. And I'm okay with that. You know, this is not a hard use knife. I don't need to bear down on it. So no big deal. It's really cool looking jimping. So yeah definitely no complaints there is a sort of a light sweeping swedge throughout the length of the blade up to about the last inch where the swedge stops and the blade tip thickens back to the full stock thickness there to add some robustness to that tip because it is a rather dainty tip and give it a little bit of strength behind that and so I really like that that thought process behind thickening that that uh that spine behind the tip there m390 font a little bit loud not real thrilled with that it's okay i guess um it's just rather big and in your face on this blade that is otherwise you know pretty aesthetically pleasing and of course the shirogorov bear logo is always super cool looking and on to the carbon fiber, we do have a highly detailed uh, 3D milling pattern, which may not show up the best in this camera angle, but it's kind of a swoosh that goes like this. Similar to how the swoosh was on the, ne the old Neon Zero, it's just kind of a, you know, like that type of a milling pattern, which uh, goes across the entire face of the show side scale and of course you've got those proprietary shear gore off screws which are a bit of a controversy even with the you know very loyal shear gore off fans people are kind of frustrated with these screws understandably the tools are nearly impossible to get and they're uber expensive so, you know, that's definitely a con for any sure go off knife. Um, but, you know, the type of people that buy the higher end Shiro's, you know, dropping 
two or three hundred bucks, even five hundred dollars on a tool to be able to take their shear and grow off apart is, is not going to bother them. But it bothers me. I'm not a rich man. Um, I can't afford the tool. I can't find the tool. So I have to wing it to disassemble this knife, which I have done. I have done it with a flathead screwdriver. Um, and I put a couple different layers of masking tape over the tip of the screwdriver bits to protect these screws and and not damage them which I did pretty almost 100% successfully there is no marring at all on the back screw and I don't really see any on the show screw but there is just a little bit of brightness on one corner and I don't know if that happened before I took it apart or, or when I was taking it apart so I'm not sure on that um, that being said, let's check out the reverse side here and the Shirogorov pocket clip. Just an amazing clip. I love this clip. Everything about it. The hidden hardware, the hidden mounting hardware point. Awesome. The way it slopes down like this. The chamfering. Gorgeous, gorgeous clip. It, it's very secure. It fits snug. It is kind of a little harsh on your pockets. It is going to be a little bit of a pocket shredder. I'm okay with that. I don't care about the pockets. I like the clip. And look how they kind of added this little wall of extra thickness here at the front of the lock bar relief cut. And how all of that is beautifully rounded in there. Just great machine work, which is what Shirogorov is famous for. And of course, this beautifully chamfered lock bar cut. The pivot screw and the mounting screw on the backside are, of course, not tooled. And they are just that bead blasted style of finish. I love that they went ahead and did the same carbon fiber inlay on the back side of the knife otherwise the this side of the knife would have been significantly more boring and so that was a very good move and I love how the scale is sitting proud above the titanium liner and so it's not really an inlay so much as an onlay and that is su super awesome too um, when we get around here this backspacer to me is an absolute win. I did not want to go with a Hation, you know, or a Neon NL because they do not have the backspacer. I really, really wanted that Shirogorov geared backspacer. And I'm really glad that I held out and spent a little bit more money and picked up the Hation Zero. And, uh, because this backspacer is just simply awesome. The way that the, the valleys are coved out. Leading into the lanyard loop there. Just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The machine work is absolutely impeccable. Now. Interesting thing. Um, this is effectively, it's a Shirogorov Neon, but with a carbon fiber front show scale. So, in the Neon version of this knife, which is the full titanium version, they have milling pockets on the inside of the scales to reduce weight. Even with the milling, milled out pockets on the Neon, this knife is still slightly lighter than the Neon, and there are no milled pockets in this knife. However, they did mark, they did put some milling marks in there where the pockets on the Neon would normally be, just to kind of give it some aesthetic appeal. I'm not getting a real good view here with this flashlight, but you get the point, I think. There are some there we are now you can see it just lines milled in and those lines are kind of like a, a mark where 
the pocket would have been milled if it were a neon lock side instead of a hotion lock side. Uh, now, this is running on multi-row bearing systems. I'll try to roll in an, a picture of the bearings that I took when I disassembled the knife. Um, they're amazing bearings and on this size of a knife it, it works surprisingly well. I want to get into the action as a whole different separate, separate section so I'm not going to start flipping this until we're talking action. I'm still on aesthetics here. Um, one more big thing about the aesthetics to me, the shearer go off plunge line is very aesthetically appealing. It is beautiful. This perfectly flat, symmetrical plunge grind. Just gorgeous. But there is a negative to that. There's no sharpening choil, and that plunge line is dangerously close to that edge termination there. And so when you go to sharpen this knife, you have to be very careful. If you don't want any scratches, scuffs, marring, or grinding on that plunge line, you have to be very, very careful to protect that plunge line with I, I put I literally put three or four layers of painters tape over that and I made sure the tape was perfectly flush along that whole edge there and wrapped it all around up in there and just made sure generally that my stones were not going to end up grinding through that tape and getting onto the plunge line and damaging it so as you can see, the result of that is I get a little tiny bit of a hook back here, which is okay. I'm okay with that. It's not horribly ugly. It's fine. And it is sharp, so. Um, yeah, so that plunge line thing there is beautiful, but there is a, a negative effect of it. And uh, I love how they've got these little interestingly terminated 45 degree bevels here. And then this rounded choil gorgeous 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 beautiful knife all around flipper tab is a little bit low profile okay which is great for carry comfort um but it, it you know it does get into your action and you you have to have a very specific way that you flip this knife because that flipper tab is so low profile um, that being said i think i'll go ahead and move on to the action you know we have covered the very appealing aesthetic points of this knife and uh, let's talk about the action because Shira Goroff in addition to their amazing machine work is also known for amazing actions and that is where these multi-row bearing systems come into play now this action to me when I first got the knife the pivot was a tad over tight from the factory okay they had tightened it down so snug that it was not hard to deploy, but the action was definitely suffering a little bit from slight over tightening. In my opinion, I'm sure they have their specs that they stand by, but in my opinion, the pivot was over tight. When I cleaned the knife and tuned it, I tightened the pivot until there was absolutely no lateral blade play. And settled right there and then I relocked tighted everything and the action after removing the the Shirogorov grease that was in the bearings and applying my own 10 weight nano oil application to the bearings and tightening that pivot to my preferred specifications the action improved easily 70% I mean this is just buttery hydraulic smooth drop shutty gorgeous gorgeous action unfreaking believable for a knife that has a blade this thin and this lightweight i've never encountered a knife of this size and stature and blade weight that was able to drop shut like this it's just absolutely flawless action the flipper now it is a light switch type flipper. I don't push button it. I'm sure some people have a method that they can use to correctly push button it, but I don't really do that. I prefer to light switch this thing. 
and it, it deploys with great snap and a uh, very satisfying sound, very satisfying clack when the tang hits that stop pin. It's, it's, a, it's a unique sound that you really only get on a knife that has a half carbon fiber scale. And so that sound, very, very satisfying. Um, I'm gonna give the, the sounds on this a good rating. And so um, love that. There is no way to fail this knife with the way the D10 is dialed in. Unless you, of course, screw up and slip off of the the pivot, then of course you're going to fail. But if you break past that D tip point, point, the blade is deploying 100% reliably and very snappy. So um, very, very well dialed in D tent. And some people have complaints about the Hatian and the neon size knives that they. They want to get their fingers on the lock bar and it makes it hard to deploy and you know I have a medium large size glove hand and uh, For me, I really don't have that issue with this knife. It's just not It's not a thing for me. I, you know I, If you hold the knife lightly in your hand, you're not You know grabbing a hold of it trying to strangle it um, It's it's just no problem my finger rests here the other two are on the clip. I'm not even really putting any pressure at all on the lock bar. And the deployment is 100% every single time. So the action on this is, for me, it, it, it's a solid 9. It could be a 10, but in order for it to be a 10, I think the knife would need to be a little bit bigger. Um, however, on on the size of this knife, another thing that, that I found very interesting about this particular design, the Neon and the Hatian, since they're basically the same knife, uh, the way that they're able to cram this 3.375 inch blade into this handle is quite impressive. So if you look close here, and let's see if I can get this in on a good focus shot, the blade is actually longer than the scales on this knife and they have incorporated the backspacer in in such a way that it extends out ever so slightly an eighth of an inch past the scales to allow that knife tip to be safely tucked away where you cannot touch it at all yet the blade is actually longer than the handle scales so to me that shows a level of attention to detail that is just very very impressive to me now to me this is a this is like practically in grail territory at seven hundred dollars i can't go out and drop fifteen hundred dollars on knives unless i do some kind of massive layaway payment plan because i'm one of the poor guys so for me when i purchase a knife that costs an excessive amount of money to me seven hundred dollars i really want everything to be very very perfect on that knife and this Shiragoroff Hatian Zero has hit that mark for me with flying colors in nearly every single aspect. The action is stunning, the aesthetics are stunning, the build quality is superb, there are no problems, there is no play, there is no bad blade centering issues, no lock rock, no lock slip, Everything is solid. The lockup on it is nice and early. And uh, I've heard some people say that they could press the lock bar and push it over further onto the tang on theirs. Well, I don't have that problem here, so it's a non-issue for me. But I have heard some rumors that that existed on some other Neons or Hations. It doesn't on mine, luckily. Now, um, what else was I going to cover? Right, we've got pricing, we've got aesthetics, we've got action. I think we're pretty well done, folks. You guys have a great rest of your day, and look out for the next review coming your way pretty quick. I've actually got two new knives that I would consider grails for me as well. 
that are going to have reviews coming up in the next week or two and uh, they're going to be fun so stick around and check that out. Later!